Welcome to Weekly Talk Back. I'm Kevin Beers. I'm David Witten. And this is the show where we get to talk back to Pastor Dave about his message from the previous day. And this week, the message title was, We Have a Problem. So we're going to talk about that, jump into it. If you haven't seen the actual message, uh, I'll, link the, uh, I'll put the link in the description below. Okay, so... In your message, you said that scholars believe there were actually two different writers of Isaiah, possibly even three different writers. Mm -hmm. But what you didn't say was why that was relevant. So why why is it relevant that we know there's different, possibly different writers? Well, I think I think for accuracy's sake, for for one thing. I mean, I think it's kind of important because if you knew. If you, if you knew that there were three Isaiahs, it certainly makes more sense in the timeline of certain events across the book of Isaiah. Because it's awful hard to explain if Isaiah lived when King Uzziah died in 738, then when you get into the whole Babylonian exile, which takes place in the mid 500s, how do you deal with that? Well, some of the more conservative or scholars from years ago would say, well, that's pure prophecy. He's looking into the future 200 years. But with, with the use of the styles of Hebrew and the genre and all that, um, today's scholars pretty much say, well, you know, it's, it's one Isaiah from 1 to 40 and uh, a second Isaiah from uh, from 40 on up and it just makes more sense um, in terms of time frame and timeline okay okay yeah it, it was just you didn't go into it yeah I just wanted to bring that up. well and I know um, I know I have been <laughs> I've preached from Isaiah in, in different churches and depending on the <laughs> progressive or conservative nature of the church theologically speaking some would say oh that can't be right you know, it's it's an inerrant word. And so if it says it's the book of Isaiah, it's one Isaiah from front to back, just like they would say that the first five books of the Bible were written by Moses. And we really can't prove that either. Right. Right. So yeah. anyway, and, and the fact that Moses says that he was the most humble person on the planet. A humble person wouldn't say that. <laughs> so it could have been a different writer who actually wrote about Moses. Yeah, yeah, and then that's what most people think. It's it's comp, a, 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 a compilation of different authors, and they kind of group it all together, and then they just pretty much you know say, well, Moses did this. Um, I think same with with Isaiah, but you know it doesn't take away from Isaiah's prophecies or the message that Isaiah is is seeking to give us. I just I put that in there more maybe for academic reasons uh, in, in case someone in the congregation is interested in knowing that. I don't know. Was there anyone? Well, well, I, I actually, I had already studied that. I already knew the answers to that. Uh, I, was, you know, I was aware of that okay. understanding. Mm -hmm. and I, I just want to bring it up because you didn't actually go into it. Yeah, yeah, I could have gone into it more, but I did want to introduce the book a little bit, but I didn't want to get bogged down in, you know, academia. I just thought, let's do a little bit of introduction to it. Maybe I'll add to it this coming Sunday, and we'll just go along and, uh, and hear what Isaiah has to say through that whole book. Okay. Uh, now, one of the things you do say in your message is that Americans have become selfish, self-centered, uncaring, rude, and disrespectful. And yet most Americans seem oblivious that they're caught up in their own selfish gains. Mm -hmm. Now, and then at another point you said, this is not unlike the times Isaiah lived in. Correct. And then again, at the end, you said later, you know, because, well, later you quoted your grandfather from mm -hmm. a sermon in 1962. Right. And he seemed to be saying the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a question about this. Okay. Do you think that every generation thinks that the time they live in is filled with that same attitude? Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I think it seems like what comes around goes around in terms of our worldview. Um, uh, do you think it's a, it's a period of, we think, well, well, because every time there's a turn of a century, uh, everybody starts preaching on the fact that we're in the end times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But do you think it comes in waves where there's a period where we think everything's going well, 
and then we get into a period where we think you know yeah that, you know everybody's separated nobody's yeah i think i think i think there is i i think if i remember right way back in seminary sem seminary many years ago one person talked about god's history as a linear line like this, you know, God created the heavens and earth, and then all the way over here where, you know, he brings a new heaven and earth down. But along with that flat linear line, there's this cyclical effect that goes along underneath it, right? So in other words, we do have some years within that linear line that is... Um, that we do as a, as a whole, as a society, repent. We recognize our, our waywardness, and and we, we you know we get on our knees and, and pray for God to uh, to forgive us and to guide us. And I think there are years that uh, we see that we've done that, and then slowly kind of fade away. And you know the Great Awakening and and uh, some of these other big revivals. I mean, are probably. Um, examples of that sort of thing is that what where you want to go with this yeah, yeah. I, just, I just want to get a feel for where you saw that uh, because uh, well actually I, I, that i wanted to bring that up at the end but i'll bring it up now so you said whether the year is 738 bc or 1962 mm -hmm. or 2023 mm -hmm. the formula is still the same Seek the Lord and his righteousness and all good things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of the, your message, you said you weren't a pessimist. Mm -hmm. But from the content of your message, <laughs> do you think the country faces the same fate as Israel? Or are you hopeful that we might turn back to God and then things will get better? Well, when Isaiah was writing, and if you read the scripture, it looks like God has given up on the people of Israel then. I would hope that in our society today and where we are that God has not yet given up to, you know, given us up. That there is still hope for for changes, positive changes within us individually and within our society for, for good things to happen. So I, I still have hope that we haven't gone that far. Uh, um, as they did back in Isaiah's time, where he said, you can tell them all, all you want, but they're not going to listen. So, you know, it's we just allow them to destroy themselves. I hope we haven't reached that point. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, that's a perfect segue into the next thing I wanted to hit on. Uh, you quoted from Isaiah saying, if only a tenth of the people are left, even they will be destroyed. But just as stumps remain after trees have been cut down, some of my chosen will be left. Mm -hmm. uh, and then God's message to Isaiah, is, you know, basically, well, actually, this is quoting you. God's message to Isaiah is one of doom and gloom. There's nothing hopeful about it except for the stump. Mm. And then you said, you said, hold on or hang on to the stump. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go there today, but hang on to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Do you want to elaborate on what's coming in your messages? Well, um, not too much. <laughs> I don't want to give it up. But, you know, um, one of the famous Advent scriptures that we use almost every year in Advent is um, Isaiah 11. And Isaiah 11 refers to the stump, Jesse's stump specifically. Now, Jesse, if you remember, is, is David's father. And so what, what it refers to essentially is a ruler or a king or a Christ or a Messiah uh, will come out of that particular stump, that there will be a shoot that grows up out of that particular stump. And so that is where I'm saying, hold on to that stump because we're coming back to that. And we can look, we can look historically, what were they looking for at the time? But we can look historically uh, over a broader area and essentially look to Jesus. I mean, Jesus, uh, as Christians interpret that passage, is the stump of Jesse. Oh, okay. That comes out. Not, not the shoot, but the stump? I'm sorry, the shoot. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Jesus is the shoot that grows out of Jesse's stump since he's offspring and, you know, uh, David's part of his ancestry. Okay. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Uh, we want to know what you think. Leave us comments down below. 
Uh, let us know if you have any questions about this. Maybe we can revisit it possibly as we go in. This was actually the first of a four-part series on Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can get into it next week. And we'll see you then. Take care.